vintage electrolytic capacitors. You're going to come across many of these during the restoration of uh, radios, oscilloscopes, you know, whatever vintage instruments. So, what do you do with them? You know, some people replace them, some people restuff them, and uh, some of them reform it. Well, I'm not saying you should do a specific method, but I'm just going to cover how do you reform these capacitors if you are up to reforming. Rule number one, you cannot reform all the capacitors. You know, if you're talking about a capacitor from a vintage uh, American 5 radio, you're not going to be able to reform it because that will be already dry completely in terms of the electrolyte. But some of the capacitors which you find in instruments like HP and Tektronics, you might be able to reform it and uh, bring it back to life. So I'm just going to quickly cover one method or one easy method by which you can reform. In most of my videos, I've shown reforming using you know, a pretty dangerous way of using a high voltage power supply and uh, wires dangling all over the place. Not the best way. So I thought I'll quickly cover uh, a simple way to reform these things using a capacitance tester. Well, I'm not the one who invented this method. Neither this is not a new information. There is already numerous articles about it. But I thought I'll do a quick video to show you how exactly to use a, a vintage capacitance tester to reform these capacitors and a couple of tips and tricks which may be helpful. So let's get started. So what's the reforming process? Um, you apply a controlled quantity of uh, voltage into this old capacitor which has been sitting idle for years uh, so that the current through the capacitor is in a controlled manner, maybe less than one milliamps, and uh, let it slowly rebuild the oxide layer between the foils. And that way, as the oxide layer builds up, the current through the capacitor will come down and as the current through it comes down, we increase the voltage even further until it reaches the maximum rated value of the capacitor. Here I'm going to show you how to reform the capacitor using one of these guys. Icon 950, Sprague T05, T06, T07, whatever it is. Or one of these uh, vintage heat kits, which is IT11 or IT21 or whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's set the ICO for the job. Um, voltage to zero, range switch to electrolytic test, and uh, of course power switch to on, you can leave the power factor at zero, and plug in the probes, uh, the plus and minus, and uh, remember the polarity when you plug the cable, and that comes down to the capacitor here. Minus go to the shield, or the minus terminal, and positive goes to the positive section if it's a multi-section capacitor, or across the positive and negative terminal if it's an old, uh, you know, single section capacitor. And connect the positive and negative to the capacitor, the right polarity. Now you can see this is a 450 volt 40 microfarad capacitor. We are all set to reform and all you have to do is start increasing the voltage in steps. So let me do the first step into 50 volt and as you increase the voltage you can see the eye will close and slowly open and uh, this indicates that the charging current is reduced which means I'm going to go and step my voltage to 100 volts and you will see the eye slowly opening up again and now I'm going to move the voltage to 150 right here and you will see the change in the eye it's going to close and come back now if your capacitor is old and it's been sitting idle for a long time it's not going to open up this fast it's going to take a couple of minutes for it to completely open up so leave it there until it opens up and then once it opens up fully jack up the voltage again maybe to 250 if that's what the next step is and you will see the eye slowly opening up and now again i repeat depending on the age of the capacitor this opening up might take longer maybe a couple of minutes sometimes a couple of hours but just leave it there and you go up until you reach at the rated maximum value of the capacitor you could do the whole thing in one step but i prefer to do it in stages and you can see it's slowly opening up if a capacitor is good reformable the eye will open up pretty well if all goes well you will see the eye completely opening up after a couple of minutes hours and that's when you can say the capacitor is fully reformed. Most important point, do not turn this back in one go because there is no discharge resistor in ICO 950. This port itself is the discharge resistor. So if you're going to crank it all the way down, it might burn the port if your capacitor is at 40 microfarad or 80 microfarad or anything above that, it can burn the port. So bring it back slowly in steps so that you don't hurt the main resistor. So assume you have reformed your capacitor and it all looks good. Maybe you want to test it. Okay, do the same test. Connect the capacitor like this or leave it like this and crank the voltage all the way up to 450. And 
if the capacitor is good, it should open up in a couple of seconds. Shouldn't take more than maybe a minute. If it opens up pretty quick, that means your capacitor is reformed well. But if it's taking too long, maybe it needs a little bit more reforming. As always, be careful. Do not turn this back all the way in one go. Take it in steps. Otherwise, you will end up having a burned pot. Let's focus on the next uh, boy here. The Sprague capacitance tester, T05, T06, you know, whatever. You're gonna connect the plugs right down here. Do not connect the capacitor yet. I'm not gonna cover how to use this instrument in this video because it is tons of videos out on the internet on how to use it. The good part of these testers is that you can see the leakage current. Make sure you crank the voltage knob all the way to the left. Set the leakage test to whatever voltage range you're testing. Set the starting voltage by pressing this button and adjusting this knob. As always, we will start with something around 100. Carefully connect the capacitor. As you connect the capacitor, you will see the charging current going high and then it'll slowly come down. Now, again, the amount of time it takes to come down to something really low, what I mean is below a couple of, you know, 100 microamps. Wait until it comes down. Once the charging current comes down to a low value, um, plus and confirm that the applied voltage is close to what you've set so that uh, you can confirm that the cap is not leaking. You can plus and increase the voltage to the next step. Maybe I'll go from 100 to 300 and then leave it again here until the charging current comes down. As we did before, we increase the voltage to the next step until the applied voltage matches the capacitor rating or close to it. And make sure that your charging current is really low. It has to be in a couple of uh, 100 microamps. What is the maximum allowed leakage current? Well, that's a big question. It's entirely different from what you see for a modern electrolytic. Uh, this is out of a CA55 capacitance tester, but I'm gonna link a couple of uh, web pages in the description where they list down expected leakage current for uh, different types and values of uh, vintage capacitors. Most important, end of the test, press and discharge the capacitor by releasing all the red buttons. Make sure you discharge the capacitor before you touch it or do anything with it. Now last, the beast, the heat kit. Pretty simple, put this guy to electrolytic test, make sure that uh, the capacitor is in discharge when you start. And uh, you have a voltage knob here. You put it into leakage test, connect your capacitor, and start moving the voltage range. As you spin up, you will see the eye is gonna take more time to open up. So right now, this capacitor probably is good. That's why it's opening up immediately. But if the capacitor is bad, it's gonna take more time as you go up in the voltage. So in case if it's not opening up pretty fast, leave it there, let it take its own time. Once it opens up, flip to the next level until you kind of hit the maximum voltage of the capacitor. Do not touch the capacitor while it's being reformed. After reforming, make sure that you discharge it by moving this up and wait until the eye opens up. Remember, wait until the eye opens up. That's when the capacitor is fully discharged and then you can take it out. That was easy and silly, isn't it? Well, this is where the fun starts. We are not gonna work on situations where the capacitor is in my hand. It's always gonna be in a chassis, especially when it comes to an oscilloscope. So how do we do this? Let's look at these capacitors. These two are different because this one the frame or the chassis or the negative is grounded to the chassis. And on this one, it's lifted. The negative is not grounded to the chassis. So in any case, you have to disconnect at least one terminal so that the capacitor is not in circuit. You can disconnect any of the terminal from the capacitor, which is easy to disconnect. Could be positive or negative. Of course, for a grounded capacitor, disconnecting positive is the easiest part. And Plug in the probe, as we said before, the positive goes to the positive terminal and the negative goes to the negative terminal and the same process. And once you're done with the reforming, reconnect the connectors or the wires back. On situations with grounded capacitors or where the negative is grounded, you need to be super careful while using a couple of instruments. On an ICO, the reforming voltage appears on the negative terminal, which means the positive is close to ground and the negative is what applies the 
actual reforming voltage or the rectify the high voltage power supply to negative whatever you select and that that's what shows up here so if you're going to use this to reform a capacitor which is grounded to the chassis your chassis of the instrument will be sitting at whatever voltage you select here so be careful while reforming don't touch the chassis because it's negative second preferably use an isolation transformer for connecting to the capacitance tester so that even if you fall over it you don't die or kill the scope on the sprag as per the schematic i see voltage coming into both the plus and minus terminals so let's measure it this guy is set for a voltage of 300 let me see the voltage on the positive side 232 and the negative 62 mm. and on the heat kit let me go for a 300 volt range on the positive 290 for a 300 volt range and on the negative nothing and the schematic explains it the negative side is sitting on the grid of the amplifier tube to drive the magic eye this is where instrument grounding is pretty critical and you may want to check how the power plug is wired if it is a two pin plug you can expect the whole thing to be floating but be careful if you're going to touch the body of the instrument and the chassis of the capacitor which you're reforming you're in for a surprise and this is the schematic for the Sprag 205 and i'm seeing a two pin plug here but if it is grounded you're in for a surprise and this is for the heathkit it11 again they show a three pin plug in the schematic but my instrument has got only two pins so that's not going to be grounded but generally in my lab i ground every equipment for my safety so if you are grounding a capacitance tester be super careful 